So, you want to buy a camera, you've saved up a bit of money, but you're petrified of getting scammed. Or maybe you can't decipher all the nerdy camera jargon when trying to find what's the best camera for you. By the end of this video, you're going to be confident in researching and buying your very first camera. I'm going to start by finding out what camera suits you best, simplifying the jargon, and spotting the differences between a good and a bad deal. First question I ask anyone looking to buy their first camera is do you want something more manual? where you have total control over all of the settings and are happy to spend a little bit more time learning how the whole thing works? Or are you after something more automatic, where the camera will take a calculated guess at what it thinks the best settings are for this photo, and all you've got to do is just press the shutter and move on to the next photo? If you chose manual, you'll be looking for a 35mm SLR camera. They look a little something like this. They let you change the shutter speed, the aperture, and you can even change the lenses. If you're looking for a place to start researching, I recommend the Canon AE-1, Olympus OM-10, and Pentax K-1000. And for automatic, you should look at point-and-shoot cameras. You can find them everywhere, and they're all really similar in design. The price of these scale up and down depending on the quality of the lens, how fast they can turn on, and do they have features such as water resistance. A really common point-and-shoot you can find all over the place is the Canon SureShot. Olympus also make a wide range of different point-and-shoot cameras. Now before you start comparing cameras online, let's quickly go over a few technical aspects you're going to encounter when doing your research. Lenses. SLR cameras like this let you switch out the lenses. In case it wasn't obvious already, the brand of the camera has to also match the brand of the lens. And it's quite rare for modern lenses built for digital cameras to fit onto older film cameras unless they have the same lens mount. Third-party lens makers also make lenses that fit on different cameras, but you've got to make sure you're getting the right lens mount so it's going to fit on your next camera. And yeah, you can get lens converters, but often they cost so much money, it's better to just get a lens that already fits your camera. Lenses come in different focal lengths. In simple terms, this means you're deciding whether you want a lens that is wider or more zoomed in than what the human eye can already see. Here we have a 50mm lens. This is the most common lens you're going to find because 50mm is exactly what a human eye sees, no wider, no more zoomed in. If you find a lens that is 24mm for example, it will start to widen and distort very slightly but you'll be able to get more into the frame. And then anything above 50 will start zooming in. Lenses that are fixed at a certain length we call prime lenses. These often have sharper optics resulting in a better image. But if you prefer the trade-off, you can get a lens that can zoom between different distances. The second part of the lens is its maximum aperture. Here you can see 1.8. And online, you'll see it written as F slash and then a number. It can take a while to fully wrap your head around the maths of it all if you're very new to photography, but I'm going to try and keep it really, really simple. The smaller the number after the F slash, the more light the camera can let in at its widest aperture setting. This comes in handy when you're shooting in low light situations and you don't want to trade off risking camera shake by having a slower shutter speed. Most prime lenses have a maximum aperture of f slash 1.8. Using a wider aperture like f 1.8 will also create a really shallow depth of field. Here I'll show you some examples of what different apertures look like and how that affects the depth of field. Now, let's take a look at some example listings on eBay. Here we have an Olympus OM-10. You can see in the title that it has a 50mm lens that can go all the way down to f slash 1.8. Looking at the example photos here, it looks clean, it doesn't have any scratches on it. And when we scroll down to the description, it all looks good apart from one critical thing. They've stated that although the light meter is working, so it can read light and tell you what settings it recommends, it has not been tested with film. This is a killer for me. The only way to be really sure that the camera is fully working is if it has been tested with film. If you buy a camera that has not been tested, you might get lucky. It might not have any problems. But if it doesn't work, and the seller has clearly stated that it hasn't been tested, you might not get your money back, and you're going to have to spend a lot more money and time getting a technician to fix it for you. Here's another camera I found on eBay. This one's a Canon AE-1. It's got a 28mm lens this time, so slightly wider than what the eye can see. And it goes down to f2.8, so not as much light as the other lens. It's in excellent condition, no haze in the lens, no scratches, no separations. And they've clearly stated that it's been tested, so you know you're getting a fully working camera. As it has an excellent cosmetic condition with no scratches on it, 
this is going to push the price up quite a bit. You can find a lot of cameras that don't look the best, but they still work just as great. Another factor you're going to need to think about is this camera, for example, is being shipped from Japan. So you're going to be paying quite a lot in shipping. And on top of that, you're also going to have to pay import duty. You can research online how much it will exactly cost to import something from the original country to your country. I'm estimating that from Japan to the United Kingdom, it would cost between 20 to 25% of the price of the item on top of the shipping. So this 200 pound camera will actually cost 250 and then the shipping. Lastly, here we have another Canon camera. This one has been film tested, as it says in the description. They haven't included batteries, but it's really easy to find batteries for cameras. All you've got to do is just Google name of camera, what batteries does it need, and you can find them easily. But as you can see, it doesn't come with a lens. This isn't a problem though. You can just Google what lens mount this camera has. So the Canon AE-1 uses a Canon FD lens mount, and then find a lens online which has the same lens mount. So here I found a Canon FD mount, 50 millimeter, 1.8 lens. And as long as both the lens and the camera are fully functional, you can buy them separately and just connect them together when you get them both. Before we wrap up this video, you're gonna to have to make sure to get some photographic film to put in your camera once it arrives. Comparing different film types is a whole other video. But some cheap options to get you started are Kodak Color Plus 200 or Fuji C200 film. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and now feel more confident in buying your first camera. I'd love to know what you guys would like to learn more about in photography and you can message me on Instagram anytime.